Item number, SCP-691. Object class, Euclid. Reclassification to safe pending confirmation from Foundation Intelligence that... Special Containment Procedures One instance of SCP-691, SCP-6910, is to be stored in a safety deposit box within the Foundation Archives at site... Any other instances are to be destroyed following confirmation that they are identical to SCP-6910. Access is restricted to Dr. and her research assistants. Following incident SCP-691-I-1, second-hand recordings of SCP-691 are prohibited unless permission is granted from a member of staff with Level 5 clearance. Please see investigation logs for details of standard experimental procedure with respect to any instance of SCP-691. Description there are currently 15 identical instances of SCP-691 that are or have been under Foundation control. SCP-691 is a plain blue cassette tape on which is printed Pure Escapism, Limited Edition, one of only 250. One side of the tape contains a short foreword by an unknown male, introducing a piece of music. See Addendum SCP-691-A1 for further details. On the opposite side, Aquarela do Brasil, using S.K. Russell's English lyrics, can be heard. This particular version is played by a modern symphony orchestra with an unidentified lyric tenor providing the vocals. It should be noted that the foreword will always be played first, regardless of which side of the tape is entered into a player and both pieces will always be played from the beginning. The foreword is harmless, and has yet to be linked to any of the effects of SCP-691, aside from encouraging the listener to turn the tape over. Subjects listening to the musical piece have reported visual, auditory, and tactile hallucinations, along with a sense of relaxation and well-being. However, it is unclear whether this is due to the nature of the hallucinations, or if it is one of the tape's cognitive effects. Hallucinations have always been described as benign by listeners, and have not been cited as a direct cause of any psychological trauma. Even though hallucinations vary, they have shown some consistency for repeat listeners. Subjects allowed free access to SCP-691 will eventually become capable of doing little more than listening to the tape repeatedly in several extreme cases, foregoing food and drink to do so. Regular listeners who are denied access will not show traditional withdrawal symptoms. Instead, they will show difficulty in acknowledging visual and oral stimuli. In a few cases, subjects have either refused to or been unable to acknowledge any external stimulus. Addendum SCP-691-A1 Transcript of SCP-691's foreword. Hi there. If you're listening to this, then I can assume that life has got the better of you. Things didn't work out the way you wanted them to, did they? Sometimes it's bad luck. Sometimes you're the cause of your own ruin. Or maybe it's just that you're going nowhere. I'm not one to judge. Everybody has regrets. It's perfectly normal. You don't have to lie to yourself. But I'm digressing, so I'll get to the point. I've got some good news for you, sir or madam. I can offer you a way out. No, 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 no! It's not suicide. You and I both know you don't have the stomach for that unpleasantness. I'm offering you something so much better besides. All you have to do is flip this tape over, close your eyes, and relax. Think of somewhere nice. Think of the good times. Think of those things you always wanted to do. Now, I can't promise that I can give you these, but what I can promise is this. On the other side of this tape, you will find an escape from your own personal train wreck. Enjoy. Addendum SCP-691-A2 All further study on SCP-691 is to be focused on identifying traits associated with its use. As per Dr. Wynn's instructions, a request has also been made to study the effects of secondhand recordings of SCP-6910 at various volumes. 
Approval pending. Foundation Intelligence and a detachment of MTF Alpha 2 are working to identify and retrieve any other instances of SCP-691 that may be available to the general public. Incident SCP-691-I-1 Persons involved Dr. Profile Dr. was a reliable and conscientious Foundation employee. His work on SCP and SCP has been of great use to the Foundation. Testimony from Dr. Rick's wife revealed that Dr. Rick was in substantial financial difficulty around the time of the incident. Although it is uncertain whether or not this was a contributing factor to SCP 691 I 1. Report 05 2000 1325 hours. Dr. Rick enters the cell of Subject D 691 25 and begins SCP-691 INV-30. 1331 hours. Dr. concludes his investigation, and D-691-25 is removed from cell for termination. Dr. reviews dictaphone and transcribes recording. 1335 hours. Data expunged. 1403 hours. Security footage shows Dr. exiting site Gatehouse Security reports that Dr. cited a personal errand as his reason for leaving. 1415 hours. SCP-6910 is reported missing by Site Security. Security footage is reviewed and a retrieval team is scrambled to Dr. home in accordance with Foundation Missing Object Policy. 1435 hours. Retrieval team finds no trace of Dr. Despite a thorough search of his home in the surrounding area. 1600 hours. Dr. R's credit card statement shows that he bought a personal cassette player from a secondhand shop in at around this time. 06 2000 0930 hours. Dr. R is reported as a missing person by his wife. Local police department are authorized to conduct a search. Under Foundation Supervision. Standard cover story 12 2000 1722 hours. Dr. R's body is found near SCP-6910 is recovered. Responsibility for SCP-6910 is given to Dr. Afterward. Postmortem showed that the probable cause of Dr. R's death was hypothermia brought about by exposure. The body was found with a personal cassette player containing SCP-6910. The Foundation leaked standard cover story and the local coroner's court returned a verdict of accidental death as a direct result of this, citing Dr. R's quote, fragile emotional state, end quote, as an exacerbating factor. Agent R's report stated that Dr. R's death was an indirect result of data expunged. The report did, however, mention that Agent R believed that Dr. R's life could have been saved if he had less knowledge of Foundation Missing Object Policy and suggested a review of non-classified information for non-security personnel. All three of Dr. R's research assistants have since been subjected to full psychological evaluations and have been transferred to projects where cognito hazards and percepto hazards are not involved. SCP-691 Investigation Logs Standard procedure for investigations involving SCP-691 is as follows. Subjects allowed free access to SCP-6910 are to be provided with a soundproof, fully furnished cell. Foundation staff entering testing cell are to wear ear defenders. Subjects listening to SCP-6910 under a member of staff supervision are to do so through headphones. All prompts from Foundation staff should be non-verbal. NB Following incident SCP-691-I-1, Foundation staff must wear ear protection when any instance of SCP-691 is being played, regardless of the circumstances. Sound recording equipment must not be operated whilst any instance of SCP-691 is playing and only written accounts from test subjects are permitted. SCP-691-INV-1 
Date. Expunged. Time. 1025. Subject. D-691-1. Procedure. Standard experimental procedure followed. D-1 was to listen to both sides of SCP-691 in their entirety, and was to give a verbal account of their experience. Report. D-1 reports nothing unusual whilst listening to SCP-6910's foreword. Whilst listening to the reverse of SCP-6910, D-1 describes how the colors of the room have become more vivid, and likens Dr. to something like out of a cartoon. D-1 reports a feeling of complete peace. Subject appeared to take great pleasure in how Dr. was always smiling, although Dr. reports that this was not the case. D-1 requested further access to SCP-691. Request was denied. SCP-691 INV-10 Date Expunged Time 0951 Subject D-6917 Procedure Standard experimental procedure was followed. D-7 was allowed free, undisturbed access to SCP-6910. D-7 was asked to record his experiences via a written journal. Report In his first entry, D-7 describes green pastures and a cool breeze. This is followed by a rambling discourse on his feelings of his newfound freedom. The second, third, and fourth entries continue in a similar vein, describing the sights and sounds of what appears to be rural Switzerland, and involving several more asides on various subjects, including freedom, atonement, and forgiveness, each entry being of deteriorating quality. The fifth entry was illegible, and was D7's last. Dr. requested that SCP-691 INV-10 be ceased at 1427 on citing that no more useful information could be yielded. SCP-691 INV-15 Date Expunged Time 1000 Subject D-691-12 Procedure Standard experimental procedure was followed. D-12 was allowed full access to SCP-6910 for 72 hours. After this period, D-12 was denied access to SCP-6910. Daily interviews were conducted. Report D-12's reaction to SCP-6910 was similar to those of D-class personnel in previous investigations. Dr. hypothesized that D-12's reaction to deprivation of SCP-6910 would lead to textbook withdrawal symptoms. Instead, Dr. encountered considerable difficulty when interviewing the subject. D-12 was not responsive to Dr. questions. Other than requests for access to SCP-6910, D-12 was uncommunicative. An MRI scan of D-12's brain showed minimal response to visual, oral, and physical stimuli. An MRI scan taken whilst D-12 was listening to SCP-6910 showed signals consistent with external stimuli, along with a strong reaction originating from the nucleus accumbens. SCP-691 INV-30 Date Expunged Time, 1325. Subject, D-69125. Procedure, standard experimental procedure followed. Dr. requested a D-class subject with a generally high quality of life, a background free of alcohol and drug abuse, and lacking traits generally associated with an addictive personality. Subject D-69125 was acquired via data expunged and subjected to a series of psychological tests and a precursory interview to gauge mental well-being and to confirm background. Subject was to listen to SCP-6910 and was to give a verbal account of their experience. Report No formal report compiled. 
Transcript of D69125's account is as follows. Translated from... Begin recording. Okay. I hear a man speaking. I can't understand what he's saying. Sounds like English. He's finished now. Do you want me to... Okay. Doing it. There. I hear music. I don't recognize the tune, but can you see this? It's a city. It's how I imagined it would be. Well, until those border security people caught us. Elaborate. You mean you can't see it? It's beautiful. Shining skyscrapers. Everything's just gleaming. This is the my brother told me about in his letter. This isn't like a city back in my country, Doctor. You'll have to see this to believe it. I could stay in a place like this for the rest of my life. Subject begins to hum, ignoring Dr. R's prompts. Tape ends. Again. I want to go back there again. No, I don't want another medical exam. I want that money you promised me. And I want that tape! Recording ends. Lesson complete. If you've missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-690. Joke bandages. Right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.